Hi, and welcome to my video on proofs in coordinate geometry, part B. And again, I'm, I'm breaking the proofs up into uh, shorter number of problems, or at least number of problems, to not to make the video too long. So this is the second of three videos on doing proofs. Let's look at these that I have on this video. Triangle EHT has vertices of E, 2, 5, H, negative 4, negative 1, and T, 4, 3. K and A are the midpoints of EH and ET respectively. Show that KA is a half of HT. Again, to prove this or to show it, I, again, I set up a diagram. So we have a triangle E is... 2, 5, so let's pretend that it's approximately right there. H is negative 4, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, right there, so there's H. And T is 4, 3, 4, comma 3, which is right there. And so we said we have a triangle, E, H, oh, that's a, I put an H there, I already got an H, that's a T, sorry about that. So E, H, T is the triangle, that's a T. And it says that K and A are the midpoints of EH, so K is the midpoint of EH, so let's uh, we'll put that in after, it's approximately right here. And A is the midpoint of ET, which is right here. So let's find those midpoints. So um, we're going to find the midpoint of E and H. So E is 2, 5, and H is negative 4, negative 1. So the midpoint of E, H. And again, we can find this very quickly. We can add them up. So 2 add on negative 4 over 2. And 5 add on negative 1 over 2. And that becomes negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. And 5 negative 1 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So that midpoint of EH is K, so let's call that K. K is negative 1, 2, right there. So there's K. Now, let's get the midpoint of ET. So let's do E is 2, 5, and T is 4, 3. So the midpoint of E, T, again, we add up the x's and divide, oh, that's a 4, add up the x's and divide by 2, add up the y's and divide by 2. 6 over 2 is 3, 8 over 2 is 4, so that's A. So A is the midpoint of ET. So A is 3, 4. So there's A. So it says, show that this segment, KA, so that that segment there is half of HT. So that means we have to get the length of KA, and we have to get the length of HT. So let's put down K here and A here. So K is negative 1, 2. A is right here, 3, 4. So let's work out that length of those two. And the distance formula is used for length. And the distance formula is x1, y1, label the points, 
it's x2 minus x1 y squared y2 minus y1 squared and x2 is a 3 minus x1 is negative 1 squared y2 is 4 minus 2 squared and we'll continue double negative is a positive so that's a 4 being squared that's a 2 being squared 4 squared is 16 2 squared is 4 that's the square root of 20 and the square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times 5 5 is a perfect square so that's 2 root 5 now we want to get the length of HT so H is H is negative 4 negative 1 and T is 4 3 So we use the distance formula again because half is x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and this, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So x2 is 4, x subtract x1 which is negative 4. And we got a y2, which is 3, subtract negative 1 squared. Notice we have double negative, so that's 8 being squared. Double negative, we have a 4 being squared. So 8 eighths are 64, 4 4 is a 16. Add it up, and you get the square root of 80. And we can break 80 down. If we take 80 and divide by 2, we get 40. Divide by 2 again, we get 20. Divide by 2 again, we get 10. Divide by 2, we get a 5. So 80 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And we got two twos, so we take a 2 out. We got two more twos, that's a 4, so we take another 2 out. 5 got to stay. So that's 4 root 5. So notice that Ka is 2 root 5 and Ht is 4 root 5. So that means that Ka is a half of Ht. 2 is a half of 4 and they're both root 5s. And the proof is done. Okay. Now this time we have a, another sort of problem. We really vary the problems. Now, are the lines x plus y equals 6, 2x minus y equals negative 3, and a negative 3x minus 2y equals 7 concurrent? Concurrent. Concurrent means that the lines all pass the all uh, pass through the same point concurrent they all go to the same point so we have notice this is a linear two variables this is one exponent of x's and y's are all ones so it's so how do we show that they go through? Well, let's take, this This is equation one, this is equation two, and this is equation three. So if we take equation one and line it up with equation two, so if I solve these two equations, I'll get the point where the two lines cross. And so we can take this pair, uh, 1 and 2, and then we can take 1 and 3 and solve them. If they both get the same points, then we know they all pass through. Another way, an easier way, 
and to solve these first two, this one and this one, get the point that these two intersect at. Take that point and put it into three, and if that point makes this equation true, then all that point makes is on all the lines, so that's where the lines intersect. If, if I th find a point that I'm going to right now, I'm going to solve this system, so the point that I'm getting, if I sub it in and I don't make the equation true, then that point, there's another point that the lines pass through. These two pass through a certain point. Let's solve it and see. Cancel. I get 3x. That's a 1. Equals 3. Divide by 3. And I get x equals 1. So if x is equal to 1, and I take, I'm going to sub x equals 1. I'm going to sub that into number 1 equation. So x plus y equals 6. x is 1. So y is 6 minus 1. So y is 5. So the point of intersection of 1 and 2 is the 1 comma 5. So if I take this point 1 5, if I take the the 1, 5, and s sub into number 3. Let's see, number 3, negative. Oops, that's a minus. So there's number 3, negative 3x minus 2y equals 7. So x is 1, y is 5. Negative 3 minus 10 equals 7. Negative 13 equals 7. That's a no. So this point lies on this point. 1, 5 makes these two equations true here, but it doesn't make this one. So that means this they are not concurrent because they don't have the same point. So this point 1, 5, which is the intersection of 1 and 2 lines, if this point made this equation true, then the point would be true for all the lines. It would be concurrent. So there's, they're not concurrent. Solutions. Are not the same. Hence. Not concurrent. not concurrent. So if I took number 1 and 3 and solved it, I would get a different point. So you can take 1 and 3. i just show you. So now I'm going to multiply this one by 2. 2x plus 2y equals 6 negative 3x minus 2y. See, this is a negative 2, so I want a positive 2 here in order to cancel out. So that gives me negative x equals 13 divided by negative 1. So x is negative 13. So the solution for these two, these two points, the x coordinate is negative 13. The x coordinate here is 1. So the lines do not intersect in the same point. I don't, if I sub uh, 13 into here and get what y is. I'm, this x coordinate of, the, of this point of intersection for these two equations lines is different than this x. So there's they are not concurrent. So by doing one solution, getting the point and subbing the point in to this third equation, if this equation, if this point made this equation true, then this would be the point of intersection of all uh, three lines. Okay, prove the quadrilateral is a rectangle. If A is negative 3, 1, B is negative 1, 3, C is 3, 1, and D is 1, negative 3. Again, let's draw a quick picture. A is negative 1, 3. Sorry, A is negative 3, 1. Negative 3, negative 1. 
Okay, there's A. B is negative 1, 3. C is 3, 1. D is 1, negative 3. So, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Going around in order. Prove that this is a rectangle. And a rectangle, we know, rectangle has four right angles. And right angles have uh, the segments perpendicular, which means we have negative reciprocal slopes. So, reason I drew it, because I'm going to get the slope of all of these, and that means if there's a right angle right here, the right angle here, so I'm going to get the slope of AB, And let's copy down. This just takes a bit of time. There's A and B. So we just got to be careful. So I have them here. So, so the slope is y2, which is 3 minus y1 over x2, negative 1 minus negative 3. And that's double negative is a positive, so that's 4. And that's a double negative, double negative. So that's a 2. So 4 over 2 is 2. Now, we get the slope of, let's get the slope of uh, BC. So B is negative 1, 3, and C is 3, 1. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's negative 2, double negative is positive. So that's 2 into 2 goes 1, 2 into 4 goes 2, negative. And now we'll get the slope of uh, CD. So let's copy down C and then copy down D. Notice I'm working them out separately so you don't get confused. C is 3, 1. D is 1, negative 3. And the slope is Y2, negative 3, minus Y1. And x2 minus x1, so that's negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. And we have to get the slope. The only other slope left is the slope of a d. So let's copy down what a is, and d is. a is negative 3, negative 1. D is 1, negative 3. So notice, as you pick it up, you're picking, I went with, did A, B, then B, C, and I did C, D, now I'm doing A, D. I just went around in order, and the slope is Y2, negative 3, minus Y1, which is negative 1, X2, which is 1, minus X1, which is negative 3. And there's double negatives, double negatives. So negative 3 and 1 is negative 2. 1 and 3 is 4. So that's negative a half. And you notice these are the same slopes that are parallel. These are the same slopes that are parallel. But remember, rectangles are uh, right angles, perpendicular lines, negative reciprocal slopes. So the slope. A, B is perpendicular to B, C. 
BC is perpendicular to CD and CD is perpendicular to AD and AB is perpendicular to AD so I have all perpendiculars they're all perpendiculars because notice the slopes the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other slopes that are slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other hence they're perpendicular so that means that angle A is 90 degrees or right angle angle B is 90 degrees angle C is 90 degrees because of the perpendiculars and angle D is equal to 90 degrees that's because of the perpendicular lines and hence it's a we have a rectangle A, B, C, D is a rectangle because we have four right angles. We got four 90 degree angles, we've got four right angles, so we got a rectangle. So, that's another video on doing proofs. And again, the more you see done, the more you do, the better you get. And if you like my video, click the like button, click the subscribe button. Visit my math website, www.mathfullyexplained.com to find more information about me, my videos, and the content. And that's the content on my YouTube channel called Math Fully Explained. Thank you for viewing my video. Bye-bye.